Hi, this is Sergey from Admit Master. Today we're going to look at a fairly challenging question from the official guide. In fact, the GMAT forums classify this question as a very difficult question. In this question, we're given three box, P, Q, and R. We know how many marbles are there in each bag, and we also know what percentage of marbles in each bag that are blue. We also told that a third of all of the marbles, if we put all of these marbles from all three bags together, is going to be blue. And the question is, what is X? Now, what most of the people are going to do at this point is to build an equation in order to find X. So let's see how this equation is going to look like. 37, which is the number of marbles in back P, times 10.8%, so 10.8 divided by 100, plus X times 66.7 divided by 100, plus 32 times 50 divided by 100, is going to be the total number of blue marbles. That is the total number of blue marbles in the first bag, in the second bag, and in the third bag. We are then told that this number is going to be a third of the total. So that has to be equal, one third, of the total number of marbles, which is going to be 37 plus x plus 32. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at this equation, I feel a little scared, and I have a master's of mathematics. But this is exactly how this question is recommended to do in the book, and also in the majority of the forums. And the challenge with this approach is that essentially we're trying to solve a problem, find the x, and then match the x with one of the answer choices. Well, I wanted to show you a different approach. That is the approach that we teach in our GMAT Mastery program. And the main difference here is that we are going to be using our reasoning skills in order to find the answer with the smallest number of calculations possible. So we're not going to solve a problem necessarily, we're going to find the answer. That is really a big mind shift that we are working on in our GMAT Mastery program that's a lot more about the, having the skill of taking the test rather than just simply knowing formulas or knowing how to do this. Because even if you're comfortable building this equation, the chance of making a mistake is fairly high. So what happens if you get the answer but it's not one of the answer choices? Well, that's going to be a challenge and it's going to be a big time drain. So without further ado, let's talk about the different way of doing this question. Well, the first thing that I probably would want to do is figure out how many marbles are actually blue in each of the bags. Well, that's actually not going to be very difficult to calculate. The number of blue marbles here in this first bag is going to be approximately 10.8% of 37. So it's a little over 10%. The marbles are indivisible, there's just one marble. So that number has to be equal to 4. Well, how about the second bag? Well, in the second bag, it's 66.7% of x, which is essentially two-thirds of x. Now, finally, in the third bag, 50% of the marbles are blue. What's 50% of 32? What's half of 32? That is 16. All right. So now, we could look at the number of blue marbles and see if we could use the answer choices to help us find the right one. Because here's something important. The right answer is right in front of us. All we need to do is find it. So let's try to find it. When I look at the work that I've just done, there's something important I would have noticed. And that is that two thirds of X is a whole number because the number of blue marbles has to be a whole number. And if x is among the answer choices, then I would immediately see that the right answer has to be divisible by 3. It has to be a multiple of 3. What answer choices are multiples of 3? Well, not too many. Actually, a is not a multiple of 3, 5, 
23 is not a multiple of 3, and 46 is not a multiple of 3. So without doing any calculations except for some really basic ones, I've already narrowed down the list of answers to 2. So now, when I have 2 remaining answers, here's the most beautiful part of this strategy, and that is I could test one of them. And if it's right, it's right. And if it's wrong, it has to be the other one. Well, it doesn't really matter at this point what I'm going to test. So just for the lack of a better choice, I'm going to choose C because maybe I think C stands for correct answer, right? C stands for correct. So I'm going to choose C and I'm going to test whether C is right. So I would like to imagine that X is 12. So here's what's going to happen. If X were 12, then I know that 2 thirds of X, so 2 thirds of 12, is going to be equal to 8. So then what's going to be my total number of blue marbles? 4 plus 16 is 20, plus 8, that is 28. So the total number of blue marbles, if C were the right answer, would have been 28. Well, if 12 is the number I'm testing here, then 32 plus 12 plus 37 will give me the total number of marbles. All right. Well, I could calculate that number, or I could look at this number and say, well, this number is even, so is this number, but this number is odd. So whatever number I get here is going to be an odd number. And then a third of that number has to be equal to 28. Well, that's not possible. Because if I take an odd number, and I take a third of an odd number, assuming that number, of course, is divisible by 3, then I have to get another odd number. So what that tells me is that C cannot be the right answer. Things just don't work out. Now, if you're interested in actually calculating that number, we can do that. 32 plus 12 is 44, plus 30 is 74, plus 7, that is going to be 81. So that number is 81. Again, we didn't really have to calculate it. We just figured there was an odd number, so divided by 3, it won't be 28. But now that you actually see the number, I think you can see by now that 81 divided by 3 is certainly not going to be 28. That is why C is not the right answer. So what is the right answer? Well, it's the only one that's left. And it is going to be B. What I've just shared with you is what we call the mastery way of approaching the questions. This is the, que the way that is based on your higher order reasoning skills. In fact, if you open the official guide, on one of the first pages, the GMAT is going to mention that the exam is not designed to test math. It is designed to test these higher order reasoning skills. So if you're thinking this is cheating on the test, it absolutely is not. In fact, this is what the GMAT wants us to do if we want to get a very high score. Because the GMAT has to be fair to everyone. It cannot be fair to people who are really skilled in math, it has to be giving preference to people who can use these advanced reasoning skills, and that's exactly what we've done. So if you'd like to come and learn a little bit more about these skills, come and join us at some of our demo classes, and of course, come and join us at our GMAT Mastery Program, where over the course of 6 or 12 weeks, we're going to teach you these sorts of strategies that are going to help you deal with any question on the GMAT, even if you are not a math person. But if you are a math person, you're going to discover that with these strategies, and of course there are a lot of these strategies, I've just shown you one of them, you can get the questions right a lot quicker. I hear this a lot from many of our um, clients who are good with math, so many of our clients who are engineers, that they know how to do questions if they can only get the questions right quicker. And that is really the secret of doing the questions quicker, is to use strategies that are a little more advanced 
a little more outside the box, a little less math, a little more reasoning. Because after all, that section on the GMAT is not called the math section, it is called the quantitative reasoning section. So I hope you join us soon. You can find the list of all of our classes at admitmaster.com. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you soon.